of The Guardian, Damien Carrington, wrote in his review of 2022 that we are another mile on the highway to climate hell. <laughs> <laughs> Lois is was, was that written in The Guardian? Yeah, that yeah it must be, must be true. Hell supreme. <laughs> well, as usual, the current situation was described as a global crisis. Oh, another one. And it seems from his words that we'll be wiped out very soon if we don't take immediate action. Fair point. Maybe they'll go for him first. The Met Office has confirmed <laughs> that 2022 was the hottest year on record for the UK by value of the average yearly temperatures. So for the Great British debate this hour, I'm asking, are we at tipping point for climate change? Well, I'm joined now by Senior Lecturer in Sustainable Construction and Climate Change, John Grant. Uh, John, welcome. Well, listen, we're on a knife edge, that's what you're saying. We're at tipping point, it's all, we're going to hell in a hand yeah. What, what, what do you make? Because this is apparently the hottest year uh, since records began. Why, why is that the case and what are we using to measure, measure it by? Well, I mean, we're, we're, it, it's not a surprise that we've been talking about this for 30 odd years and people have been laughing it off because obviously planetary systems, they take quite a while to change. But once they get moving, that momentum kind of continues as well. So it, it shouldn't be a surprise to anybody that, you know, the laws of physics say that as you keep increasing the amount of carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide, and the knock-on effects of water vapour and all of that, that, that we're, we're, we're experiencing a much warmer world. And, you know, our summers um, going through, through, I mean, the most recent summer was a, a sort of exemplified this. But not only the summer, you know, in November, although I think most of us have forgotten it because it was so cold um, in the latter part, <clears throat> you know, we were at 21 degrees in, on Remembrance Sunday in, in Wales, parts of Wales. It's, it, it's very warm, but we've got this flickering effect as well where we experience it really cold. Look at America that's dragged down all of this Arctic air over it. And, you know, we could uh, theoretically have a similar experience over here. This is this has all been predicted, and it's just unfortunately that that you know it, it, that that statement from the Guardian is that you know we, we ignore this at our peril. No, but I mean, okay, so okay, so I mean, you, you are. Do you remember the summer before this one? I mean, that wasn't so great, was it? And obviously, the way I mean, and some winters are hotter than others. I mean, how how long have these records been going on for? Because I think if you look at the global, the, the Earth and the world as a larger thing, haven't we gone up through these peaks and troughs um, throughout the throughout existence of, of the planet? Yeah. <clears throat> Absolutely. The, the planet is always changing, and mm. and that is often given as an as a reason why we should ignore the current shift. But but what you need to put into that that is the speed of the change and previous extremes that we are aware of. So it was a little bit warmer in the medieval times around Europe, but not across the world. And uh, it, it, the thing is that over the last 10,000 years or so, we have been relatively stable, about one degree warmer or one degree cooler than, a, than an average. Now, what we've got at the moment is that we're at 1.2, over 1.2 as an average, uh, as an average, remember, so there are parts of the world that are significantly warmer and other parts that are cooler or stable. But, 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 but this speed of change, it is this speed of change that we're experiencing that we really haven't seen in the geological record. And that, that, that's where, you know, the, the, the concern comes from the scientists. It's not that the world is changing. Yes, the world could change. It is the fact that we are pushing this with our accelerator firmly on that pedal going down this road. And we're doing it very rapidly. And that put, gives us a real challenge to adapt to this changing world. And, you know, and this flickering of, of extreme heat and extreme I think cold, the word that you said just, there is, know, is, is, is adapt, hard, isn't it? John, it's John, John, the people. John, John, the word you said there yeah. is adapt. Yeah, is adapt to the change. Um, not necessarily try and stop it, because I don't know how much power we really genuinely have to stop yeah. something that is changing, which would be changing anyway, but you're saying it's changing quicker than it would normally. And you also said, uh, since uh, previous uh, records that we are aware of, of course, that is that we, we don't really have a real... We don't really know, do we? And is climate actually something that you can 
realistically pre predict? Is, is the planet not something just like someone's mood? You can't really tell what it's going to do. Uh, there's a feedback to it. What you do might make it do something different. So with us changing the, the amount of CO2 and stuff might encourage something different, which could be worse. Is there, is there any, in your modelling, is there anything that factors in if the planet doesn't do what we're expecting it to do? Of course. I mean, these are people's entire lives spent studying the output yeah. of the sun, the position okay, so of what the if, planet so what if... around that. We know what, what, what the background should be because we play these models backwards first before projecting them forwards to see whether they, when you run them, whether mm. they get it right in the past. They, they, these are not, it's not just somebody sort of like, going, oh, what? I think it's going to get a bit warmer because there's a bit more CO2 in there. No, but nobody's saying that. But, but, but listen, listen, you saw, listen, you saw the modelling with COVID, right? Can I just, OK, John, just bring you back to the modelling for COVID. They did all the things that we're supposed to put in and did this, and it was way off. It was way off track. What if, is there any modelling that you've got in there that suggests what if it isn't CO2? Is there any other suggestions or are we just pumping in one specific objective because there might be just like with diesel we thought oh we can't have the diesel's wonderful it's amazing we hadn't worked out that nitrous oxide was an issue and then we realized it later so what i'm saying is have we modeled it and tried other things that could be could be affecting the planet rather than just co2 Yes, and the scientists are publishing on that. And the problem is that the politicians, they want an easy solution. And I get why they want an easy solution. Mm. They want to say, right, well, what's the one thing? When I get put on shows like this, mm. I often get asked, John, what's the one thing we can do to stop climate change? Mm. And huh, there isn't one thing. The, so the reason the point, we are then? here... So, so if there isn't one thing... ...series of things, and the solution will be a whole series of responses too. So, so one of them, you're saying, is to reduce CO2. What would another thing be then for climate change? What's the well, next... We need, to, we need to get a handle on the methane emissions that are spiking at, at the moment and, and also get that feedback understood about how the ice is melting in mm. both Antarctica, which is at a catastrophic loss at the moment, and the, the thinning of the ice in the Arctic, which we've been measuring now for decades. And it is a real concern that once you, I think you started this by talking about tipping points. Mm. And, tipping. and the idea is that the world wants to stay stable. I want it to stay stable. But you why? Do. The perhaps. people that are sitting either side of you do. But, but, but perhaps. Uh, we but, could reach a point where we tip over that. And yeah, surely perhaps, we have to play it safe. But, but, but perhaps, perhaps, just, just, just suppose it, that the world, uh, Earth creates its own homeostasis, so its own balance. So just like if I said I'm going to go on a detox, which is not a detox, by the way, it's very bad for you, what your body does is then sort of tries to level everything out, level everything out and bring in different... Why, what makes you think that the Earth is not creating its own homeostasis in another way? And by you putting something in, it's a bit like putting a, a valve in a heart when they do that and then they've realised that actually it, it creates other issues because the body starts to help itself and sort of balance itself out. What makes you think well, that well, if we do that, we'll, 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 you know, that we've got the balance wrong? Well, yes, it is, without a doubt, one of the most complex scientific strategies and and mm. and, and uh, investigations that we've ever undertaken but as i said right at the beginning here the earth over the last 10,000 years has been extraordinarily stable prior to that it's been warmer colder more co2 less co2 yeah, but and it was very dynamic and we know that and what we could do is push ourselves out of this very stable situation mm. because it is extraordinarily unlikely for us to be this stable for well, listen, 10, John, years. Well, listen, John, I'm running out of time. If we go out of John, it, John, I'm running emergency. out of time. I could talk to you about this forever. We would never agree. <laughs> but it's really, well, it's really good to talk to you. It's not agree or disagree. We, we, well, well, I do disagree. I do disagree. It's whether you accept that we can be pushed out of this. I, well, I, don't, I, I, don't, I think that the Earth itself could find its own balance. I suspect that what we well, could, could do... Could, it's could where humans can live in that new balance. But, but, That's my yeah. concern. But maybe we're we not meant to. Five degrees warmer now. But, but maybe we could never change it. John, look, it's always great to talk to you. Thank you so much for joining me.